Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and today I thought we would just do something really fun. So let's get started. Today I want to paint a graphite watercolor piece, and I wanna try out the Derwent Graphitint paint pan set that I got, um, and it's got, you know, 12 different colors in it, and I've never used it before. And one of my favorite graphite colors are the Genzai Tambi colors, so I still have those here. Um, just in case I want to pull from one of those. And I've got just a little sampler paper here that I thought we could just take a look at what these actually are. Ooh, that's pretty, the autumn brown. And then we could kind of go, ooh, that's pretty too. That one's russet. <gasps> Meadow. You know what I like about graphite watercolors so much is they are kind of grayed down because you've got gray graphite that's added to it. So all the colors have this really pretty, slightly yummy vintage tint to it. Ooh, look at that dark steel blue. Ho, ho, ho. And they're just so lovely. And because I already had these kind of activated, I'm picking up just a ton of pigment. Oh, so pretty, pretty, pretty. And that one's a gray. And just to, just to compare, that one's a dark. I need to just pick up a little tip of color there, don't I? Or I'm not even gonna know what these are. So that, that middle blue is a pretty green tealish color. Okay, so there's all our graphite colors that we got. And actually, now that I've done that, I can see they're very similar, and it'll be interesting when they dry to see how they dry from two different companies. Um, this one and this kind of port here, very similar. Um, this uh, graphite yellow, very similar to this uh, meadow up here. This kind of greenish graphite green, very similar to this one, which is what? That slate green up there. Um, so you can see how these have a very similar color range in them. This is more of a brown. So I don't really see a brown up here per se, um, but it's very interesting to see the differences. And when these dry, I'll be able to see, you know, how much they granulate, what they kind of look like. And I like having this little bit of a color chart. So now I can decide what colors do I want to pull? I'm really loving this kind of purple and this maroon. Um, I love this set of three up here. I love the greens and the blues. So maybe on this one we go green and blue because the one I did recently in regular watercolors was um, pretty light in the warm pinky family. And so let me just move these tens I the Graf Ganzai Tambi colors right back here. So I've got this little Graphitent paint pocket set. It came in one of my monthly art boxes and we're just gonna have a play. I think I'm gonna start with maybe this kind of brown and do these cool colors and just see like what, what are we gonna get here? Let me get some water here on my brush and just do a beautiful abstract something. I'm gonna pull a clean water around. Um, so I have it ready. And you know, when I'm looking at a bigger piece of paper, I'm working on a larger sheet. This is my Hanamal watercolor nine by 12 cold press cotton paper. I love the cotton paper because you have a little more work time when you're when you're doing stuff. And so I'm, I look at this and I'm thinking, okay, what kind of composition do I want? Do I want it kind of curving around? Do I want it U-shaped? Do I want something here and something here? And I just start kind of going with the flow and then tapping in some color and just seeing where we can go. I'm not... I'm not thinking super hard about this, where things are going at the moment. I just want to lay color down and enjoy the process of, you know, seeing how they blend and flow. And then after I do this, I didn't like that bright, bright blue, I don't think. Um, I want to keep it more kind of these muted tones, maybe. Hmm. 
got the brown and that blue. That was super bright. Let's go on over here to the steel blue and see. Um, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Now that's dipping some contrast in there. Um, yeah, but at this point, I'm just playing. Seeing what we can get, going with the flow, having some fun, enjoying the process, and then we can mark make on top of this. Okay, so let's go into this indigo. I like indigo. That might be brighter than I'm thinking, but I do like indigo. And while they're all wet, I am enjoying the way that they kind of blend into each other. Okay, that was actual watercolor up there. <laughs> thought it was a speck of dirt and this is kind of outside my normal color range you know if you look at some of the things I normally do this is a little bit outside those normal colors um, kind of thinking what about this little purple here as a, a little surprise in there That's fun. I'm going to kind of go back up here to this first color. Maybe drop a little bit of that in there. You know, I could come back in and start like a whole second little spot here. It doesn't all have to be connected. And then I could hold it up and see. Do we have any drips that are kind of wanting to start and come out of here I could add a little tiny bit of extra water just to kind of help the drip come on down and I can get a little drip here out of this right here oh yeah that's pretty could do a little drip over here Oh, very nice. Okay, so now we got some yummy drippiness. I'm almost wanting to come back now and drop some darker color contrast. Get those kind of... I could let it dry some and then drop some more color on top. That would give me a lot of contrast. And what I noticed too with graphite, depending on how the paper you're working on and how it wants to separate, um, you almost see the metallic bits and the granulation really starting to show up with the graphite so that's very interesting so i think i'm gonna let this dry a tiny bit and then come back in here and drop some color some more color maybe i'll come back with this port now that i'm just in here <laughs> um, and then we'll come back and draw on top of this and just see what what are we getting oh i like that let's drop a little up there that's pretty Okay, I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to draw on top with some ink and maybe some more graphite. So I'll be back. All right, this is dried really beautifully. And what I like about graphite paint is you can take a spoon, like the back of a spoon or something, and all the bits where it looks like you can see pencil coming through, like I can see it looks like pencil coming through, I can go back and kind of buff that and make that pencil shine like the gray shine of a pencil. And so any heavy areas that you've got on here, you could kind of come back and just buff that with a spoon. Metal spoon's fine. I just happen to keep a plastic one up here and really bring out those bits of gray. Um, I like that little metallic sheen that the gray pencil gives us and just burnish that right out of there. The thicker the paint, the prettier that and thicker that sheen comes out and you just burnish that any spot that you feel inspired to burnish it. And then as we come back up, you see how, especially like right up here, you can see that shines now. That's what makes graphite super fun. Um, so I just keep a plastic spoon up here in my art room and when I'm working with graphite, I can come back and do that. Um, so I've just got some black pens up here. You can use some Pigma pens. It doesn't matter what you mark wake, make with. And I'm going to start now kind of just doing some interesting mark making. I might take some graphite um, pencil or sticks or anything like that. Maybe 
maybe I want my matte graphite. Um, I like this Pitt gra Graphite Matte Fabric Castell pencil in the 14B um, because it's very dark and I can come and just do some great lines and marks right on top of any of the pieces that I want to get some extra detail in. So at this point, I'm going to do some mark making with a pencil. And if I want to be careful about smearing that graphite around, because it is pencil, can get my little stir stick, my paint stir stick, and just kind of hold it up off my paper and that can be my hand rest. And I might come back in with Posca pen and black pen and just add some fun marks and details in that way. Okay, this is already looking really pretty and beautiful. I just added white dots and black dots and then I added some pretty flowy ribbons and vines because we did an art prompt challenge uh, previously and I am just obsessed now with the little lines of leaves and that almost makes me want to come in and add some birds, the little birds like we've done in the past so I might come back in with some nice little V's to kind of look like little birds out there flying and I could even come outside the piece and do some birds and the reason why um, you might possibly want to do that is if you have say a little flaw somewhere on your piece it's a really nice way to hide a flaw or a spot or a place that maybe you wouldn't want to have um, as the focus with it being there. And so just kind of some fun ways to add to your piece. Okay, I love those. And then what else do we need? I feel like we could use some gold. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna add some gold. Whatever your favorite thing is to play and add to as you're going, you know, don't be afraid to slip some of those in. We all know I like things to be pretty and shiny. And so we're going to do it. We're going to gold it up a little bit. Whatever your favorite marks are, that's what I want you to do. I like doing little, little gold bits and stuff, so that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to add in here. 
and I like little circle-y things so I did like half circle like maybe didn't keep going whole circle maybe gold dots and lines and some maybe little pearls I like the little pearls on the gold lines I like the little leaves on the black lines you'll just get to a point where you're like oh I like this element that could be you know my signature thing um, and then you could start adding that into your pieces as you go and then when people see your pieces of art they're gonna recognize it because they're gonna be like oh I know who makes those marks I know who did this art because there's an element that I recognize in their pieces. Um, so it's always fun to have some yummy little signature things going in your art. And I'm kind of thinking, like, do we want to have like a little bit of, say, uh, scribbly writing that says, look, there's some writing in there. I wonder what it says. And you don't quite know, but you're like, I think it says something. And what does it say to you based on, you know, what this piece kind of looks like to you? So I like doing this kind of asymmetric writing, which is writing that you can't quite tell what it says because it's basically scribble. But um, it's been used in art pieces throughout history and on all kinds of things for a very long time. And I think that's a fun element to throw in there. And then you just have to look back and say, okay, is it done? Is there anything else that I'd like to add to this piece? I do like to kind of look at it to the side and see, do I have enough little tiny bits of shimmer in there or do I want a little more? Um, I do like sometimes it just to be something you glimpse from the side, perhaps. I almost feel like I could have a tiny bit more glimmer um, up here like as a third element maybe a half circle to kind of pull that in up here and so we're not leaving them hanging in twos because really things are more interesting in odd numbers and I feel like this could have used that little bit right up there oh yeah okay see and I feel like that balanced it really nicely loving that all right so I'm gonna call this a little yummy thing well now as I say that I am thinking on my little black birds that they're kind of out here hanging on their own aren't they and maybe we could have had a few black birds out on this side perhaps like something like this kind of kind of off so it's not like those were out there off by themselves again in kind of odd numbers maybe okay i'm feeling good about that now all right so i think i love this and i might like a piece that i did in our art prompt challenges i could deco the edges that would be pretty um so just some things to think about but super fun loved playing in my graphite watercolors today today was more of a let's just paint and have fun and test out the derwent graphitent colors which i have never used before it's the first time i've used those and the colors are really beautiful kind of grayed down the pencil part separated out really cool so that i had um, some areas that i could burnish and bring out and so I love the graphite because it's got that yummy grayish color to it, to every color. That's what I like about it. And this was a fun set to play with. I like that there's 12 colors. They were enough pigment in there for me to get excited about it as I laid them down. So these were super fun. Hope you enjoyed playing in the graphitint paint set with me. Let's peel the tape and see um, what it looks like. Just pulled off of our artboard these are artboards that i tape these down to and i'll link everything all the supplies that i'm using i'll link those under the video for you so you can check out those links and the different stuff that i'm using except the black pen i would just get your favorite black pen any of the pigma pens are really good for that because um, this 
Kirataki ones came in my art box and they're kind of hard to find because I've tried to get a couple more of them and so I might just be out of luck. All right, we'll just get that right off of this board. Look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness, that's a pretty piece. All right, hope you had fun checking out the Graphitent, painting with the different colors and doing a little abstract piece with me today. And I'll see you the next time I'm in the mood to paint. Mm -hmm.